First and foremost, I really like to thank all of you for joining in today. Today we have a very, very interesting session plan for all of you. The topic of today's session is from traction to scaling up your startup business. I'm not sure at what stage you are in. Are you at a stage where you are thinking that you will think one day or you're really thinking to start or you've already started or you already have a, a established business and now you're planning to scale it up in whatever stage you are in. You know, this session is something that will be relevant for you. Uh, we have somebody very, very special who would who have come to lead today's session. Uh, welcome Amit Agarwal. Amit Agarwal is an entrepreneur. He's a startup mentor and he's an advisor. In fact, Amit is a, one of the person who is responsible to grow YouTube India content network from launch to the second largest content globally uh, in less than three years. So uh, Amit is a MBA from I'm Bangalore and a graduate from Sten Stephen College Delhi. Welcome Amit. So before I actually hand over the session to Amit, uh, just a quick poll. We want to just have an idea on um, who you are and who all is present in today's session. So I'm just launching a poll in front of you. What best describes you? So if you're a student, you can actually pick the first option. If you're a working professional, uh, you can pick the second option. If you've already started your business and you're in the early stage, you can pick up the third option. And if you are an entrepreneur and you have an established business and you're now you're planning to scale it up, the fourth option, or else just put the other category. I'll just wait for another few seconds and then we'll close the poll. So would request all of you to please respond to this and then I'll share results with everybody as well. Great, so uh, five, four, three, two, one, thank you. Uh, so here are the results, Amit, just for your information, 17% are student, 53% are working professionals, 27% are entrepreneurs early stage. Right now, there is nobody who has an established business. So a lot of people are looking to scale up and 3% are in others category. So uh, that's it from my side. Amit, over to you. You can start the session now. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh... This is this is great uh, honor for me to be talking to people out there. Uh, I just want to uh, start by putting in a small disclaimer. This is my first webinar that I'm giving. I've attended quite a few, including one last night, and uh, I'm a little nervous because I'm not used to long, long monologues. Uh, and 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 this will this will sort of test me out. So so please keep interacting at least on the chat window, um, so that I feel that you're with me. Uh, this tool is new to me. From the presenter version, but but we will really, we'll be efficient on time and and run through the slides. I don't know whether you guys can see my uh, slides now. Um, couple, yeah, slides visible. We don't see it in the slide okay. format right now. Got it. So so let's let's set this rolling uh, very quickly. Uh, this is the topic. Thanks to Digital Vidya, we are all here. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or on LinkedIn, whatever you like better. I use these two primarily LinkedIn. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, I just want to start out by sharing one rule. Uh, there are exceptions to every rule, right? But so, so do not take anything as a gospel. Um, this itself is a rule. So sometimes it applies as gospel, but sometimes it doesn't. Um, so, so these are this is not like mantras or something. This is more a story session, uh, telling and, and sharing my journey of of launching um, YouTube and then scaling it up in the early days. I think I will save, given the audience composition, I'll probably save the later stages. But but talk about the early days a lot because some of you are probably one of the entrepreneurs. Uh, that's one assumption I'm making. About half of you. And another substantial people are in the early stage entrepreneurs who are probably just about to roll out a pilot or have just rolled out a pilot and thinking of their next steps for meaningful traction. And I will go through those assumptions. And if you feel good, if you disagree, feel free to just put it on the chat box. I will hear you and I'll, I'll keep tailoring my talk as we go along. Um, so let's start with the basic question why are you here? I'm here to talk to you um, and, and, and hopefully pass on some learning, some, some lessons, some principles that I observed during this journey. And, and, but, but for you, you've got to answer yourself, why are you here? Is it curiosity? 
I'm not good looking uh, film star, celebrity, nothing. So you're not here to see me for sure. Um, and the question is also relevant because the YouTube journey will not apply to you. Um, matter of fact, no startup journey will as is apply to you. Does that make sense? The reason I'm saying it is because each startup is its own journey. Uh, the YouTube journey in a recap in a very, very nutshell. In our first year, we went from zero to about $2 million of business from launch. Uh, we, we had about 5 million unique users in India. Um, in the next couple of years, we went about 10x of that on, on business and about 5x on the users. The watch time definitely went more than 10x. Um, and the next blog is, is probably boring part and then not interest to most people because I think what we try to grapple is what should be our first steps, just given the poll results, right? And, and therefore, I'll, I'll probably stick to more on the first uh, blog over here, what I learned over there, etc. cetera. Um, but before I start, I think, uh, I don't know how many of you had time to go and, and find me on LinkedIn. It was LinkedIn out on the digital media site. Um, and and, and this, is, this is me on LinkedIn. Uh, and I'm launching a product startup called Wiz Kids Media. Um, I have an advisory setup, evangelizing for India goes global. Very, very passionate about the startup ecosystem um, and, and, and trying to help people. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but where does Amit come from? Um, I've been speaking very limited. Uh, so, so there are obvious gatherings where I, I sometimes participate or get a chance to participate, like music and that happened. Uh, Q4 last year, or then I was invited to represent India in France, NICOM, which is sort of the mecca for, for the video industry to represent India over there on a panel. Uh, but frankly, Amit started his journey not really determined to build a big digital business. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 38, so I started my journey in an era where there were hardly any internet users in the country. I, I got my first email ID when I was already in my B school. Some of your students are wondering, uh, I don't know at what level, uh, at what stage of studies you are, are probably wondering, like, that's really old. But that's where I started. I was not really planning to build a digital career because none existed. Google was found, founded at that time, right? Um, and, and before that was Yahoo and Hotmail back in the day. Hotmail was my first email ID. I started my career very, very traditional B-school grad style. I started with FMCG industry. Um, and the, back then, the Infosys TCS global delivery model was booming. So I switched after four years to uh, IT consulting. I spent three years at Infosys and then got a chance to work at Google. So, so it's just a very uh, jack of a lot of trade sort of a journey. And within Google, I launched several businesses uh, before we, we reached YouTube, which sort of scale and scale and scale. Um, and then scale to the largest product in India besides. Google search itself. So, so just to, to put the context of this hundred million dollars, uh, Facebook in India last year, to my estimate, from is was doing like much less than twenty-five million dollars. I could be wrong. This is something that came from a credible source, but obviously I do not have access to the confidential statistics. Um, and 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 Google is obviously done really really well for themselves. But when I started at Google, seven and a half years worked there plus eight months. So about eight years ago. Google itself was a, a $20 million business in India. Very, very tiny for a $5 billion company at that time. Uh, what am I doing with India Goes Global? Why are we speaking here? What is our mission? Uh, India Goes Global uh, energies come from you guys, the startup ecosystem. The mission is we saw a clean area. So there were like lots and lots of these great teams with great products, working products, making meaningful impact but not scale. And, and I thought that I learned a couple of things at Google on how to scale digital businesses. So I thought, why don't I start out by just brainstorming with people? And over the last eight months, I've helped almost 400 plus entrepreneurs do one-to-one -one sessions. So this one won't count in the 400. But one-to-one -one strategy brainstorms, where you just help them uh, de-bottleneck sometimes growth, or just help them discover growth sometimes, right? Uh, bulk of the focus is on India, about 85% of this 400, roughly about 350, 370 came from India, but balance is sort of spread out. Uh, uh, we have set an ambitious goal of reaching about 1,000 plus by 2015. You can help me, you can be part of it by 
uh, reaching me out on either Twitter or LinkedIn and then raising a request. I'll talk about more about that later as to what process we follow. Uh, but, but this is where I wanted to start. So this is about traction. So, so for people who have not started, you got to start somewhere. And I came across the picture on the web. So, so typically you start with your angel round from family. Get there, this kid is starting. Uh, started as family. My brother is funding my venture. He was the first investor on board. Uh, but but we are still wrapping up our seed investment and, and we've got some serious industry interest as well. But but assuming when you started somewhere, you start as Auntie Daddy. Uh, and, and and I think some of you are looking for some mantras, some secrets. Uh, so I wanted to put some 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 disclaimers up front. Uh, no matter what you do, how you go about it, what mantras you follow, each start has their own journey. Uh, the truth of success is itself the mantra. Uh, the, the journey after success becomes the mantra, but, but primarily what we're talking about things that you cannot replace. Um, I think that's a disclaimer. No matter what path you follow, these are like basic. You won't hear any successful entrepreneur or entrepreneur uh, talk their story and not talk about these things. The hunger and the passion, uh, the drive that comes from within, I think you can never replace that. There is zero substitute for that. Uh, I wish I could say that, hey, you can start like 50-50 if he and it'll work. I think at some stage you have to discover that passion inside of you, that hunger, that drive that will take you through. Um, it, it's, uh, it's an interesting ride, interesting journey for entrepreneurs and, and therefore uh, and therefore you, you just have to figure out that passion for success. Don't do it because it sounds good, it sounds cool, it's a in thing, it's the flavor of the season because VCs are investing there right now. That's not the right approach. If you see an opportunity, you believe you can make an impact and it drives you. Uh, you get passionate about it, you get excited about it, that's the place to go. Uh, a lot of examples I've seen where, where people started when there were no industries. Legendary Steve Jobs always launched industries, right? He, he changed industries three, four times with different launches. Um, iPod, iPad, iPhone, iTunes, iMac, etc., etc., etc. Right, uh, Microsoft in their own way, Google in several ways, Yahoo in several ways, and so on. Uh, so, so the passion will take you through. The second thing that that cannot be replaced is this, this whole attitude thing. So, one is the hunger inside of you. The other thing is the attitude around excellence. If you're not trying to make a huge impact, do your best, and stretch the limits, I think you're going to suffer. And this is my disclaimer out there: uh, that that you can have a vision and a hunger and a passion, but you also need to back it up with excellence. And if you don't have both of these at some stage, you will struggle. And you will have to find that inside of you at some stage. And, and the good news is it's all inside of you. So you can just decide uh, to, to be diligent about that. Uh, the why question. Let's, let's move, change gears, talk about the why question very quickly. Um, because that's the most important question, right? Why did you get started? So, so some of you who are in the early stages of launch, um, I was wondering um, how to get traction, how, who's the right lawyer, the right partnerships, right marketing, right product strategy, the right tech, et cetera, et cetera. But this is the most important question, why did you get started? And, and hidden in that is the question is the passion question. Are you really emotional about your product and the impact you're about to make? Uh, if, if, you're, if it's not driving you a lot, I think you've got to figure out a smaller niche within the space that you're excited about that, that gets you really, really fired up. Okay, so the early grind principles, I think this was a bonus slide, but looks like it's going to be a core slide for today. Um, so we're going to talk about this a little bit. I'm moving slightly fast. Um, I don't know, I've, I'm not seeing much of activity on the chat window, so this is just a reminder. Um, we will run out of slides very quickly, and some of the later slides are not relevant for today's audience because most of you are uh, trying to be entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs and or are in the early stage of your launches. Uh, the later slides are, are typically around how we scale up the business beyond $2 million uh, to $100 million. Those principles will not be fun. Trust me about that. So, so I need to see some activity in chat. Even if that's to say, I mean, uh, we don't have anything to say, that, that's good enough for chat. It's a chat box. Okay, I need a proof that you guys are listening. So we are getting lots of yes and highs. Okay, that's good, that's good. 
uh, and I can't see that. Uh, uh, yeah. So Amit, uh, I think I think you're yeah, looking at the chat window. Uh, it's there in the questions panel. Uh, people will not be able to write anything in the chat window. There is something called as a question panel. Can you see a question panel? I'm on the questions panel and I can't see anything. It says question, asker, and blank. Uh, no, no. There are possibly uh, 30 to 40 odd comments being posted just after you said, are you listening? Okay. So definitely okay. listening. Yeah, so I'll. Uh, what I'll do okay. is... Uh, so, so you'll have to copy, yeah. So uh, let me just make you the organizer as well, uh, and let just that might help you to sort of have a better visibility. Uh, so right now you're the organizer. Can you see that now in the question panel? Or uh, uh, so so the, for those of you who join later, I'm I'm new to this. I, I've never been on the presenter side. Okay, can you increase the volume? Hi. Okay, so this is discussion with friends. Voice is not clear for a couple of people. Yeah, so one thing we can do is if you can, yeah, if you can just uh, turn off your webcam, that would help because in between there were times that voice was breaking. Okay, so so the first quick question, so you got to respond. I'm about to turn off my webcam. Is that okay for you guys? Because the voice will get clearer. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, there was a webcam. Can you still see the stream, couple? Yes, we can. You can continue now. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's start with that. Voice is okay, yes. Got it. So this is the bonus slide uh, originally planned, and uh, um, I, I delivered this, this these slides at a Thai talk, which I did a couple of weeks back here in Gurgaon, um, and and we got some massive uh, feedback. I, I, got, I got very energized with that, and I, I thought, is there a way I could share with other people who are telling me, saying we can't make it physically? Is there a web link? And, and we really did not have, uh, we really did not have any any uh, any recording that we could share on, on my LinkedIn or Facebook or something. So so I, I'm so glad that that digital video gave me this chance. But uh, in that talk we had all kinds of a mix. This is primarily early stage crowd. So so this is an important slide. There's a question from Sanket. Uh, I'm taking that. I cited two million initially. How did I come out of that number? That's a fact. We did two million dollars of YouTube revenue in India in our first year of launch. Um, moving on. So, what's your starting point when you're starting your journey as an entrepreneur? What are the first few things that you need to fix? The most important thing that will stop you. I think uh, I would. I would really want to know what should uh, what should you plan for. Now, when I typically ask this question there, or I've asked this one-to-one -one for a lot of startups that I have advised, um, they, they typically talk about get into the right space, choose the right team, et cetera, et cetera. But I think there's a point before that. What you've got to fix is, in my opinion, and, and then please feel free to make your own judgment, I think a lot of people do not try to solve the family question. Um, most of us have parents, spouses, other relatives around us who are key influencers to our happiness quotient in life. And, and if they are not on board, because this is going to be a rough ride for a couple of years before it starts to become easy, if it does, right? Sometimes it takes longer, actually. I was, I was listening to Snapdeal founder um, at, at, at a Thai conference uh, two months back, and he was talking about how bad it got for the first couple of years, in fact, three years before it started getting better. Uh, Rahul cannot hear anything. Rahul cannot hear anything. Um, I hope others are. Yeah, I'll take care of that. And, and if you guys can say that. Okay. And so the starting point one is take care of your family, get them on board. They have to see your zeal. Sometimes they are very nice to you, sometimes they're very supportive to you. Remember the previous slide, your funding typically comes from starting funding comes from either your own pocket for some of the working people or from family and and they have to be on board to support you uh, it makes a lot of difference and and sometimes entrepreneurship can be thrusted upon you but mostly it's a choice to go through a whole time the second piece where I see a lot of people not doing enough planning is the financial question are you really planning your finances properly will you survive because honestly you got to survive before you win so those are the two points I wanted to make at a very early stage. If you're like, 
at a stage where you're deciding to jump from your corporate career, from your student life into entrepreneurship, get your family aligned. Uh, get your financial plan in place. Who will pay daily expenses for how long will that plan work? Have enough of a backup. Typically, six to 12 months is a fair start. You don't have to put up like a five-year financial savings. You would be really, really lucky if you could do that. Uh, if you can, that's always a bonus. But typically, six to 12 months is the minimum you need. I've seen people jumping without thinking about this question. And then at some stage, this becomes a big, big hurdle. Yeah. Uh, have the right goals. Um, so, so, so visualize if you're going to roll out a pilot, right? Um, there's a product or a service. What is it that you're trying to prove? Um, I, I love the title of a book, which I have not read. So I, I'm, this, is not a, this is not a claim that the book is good, but the title was Nail It Before You Scale It. Uh, so I, I subscribe to that philosophy that can you nail it? Can you nail it first that your product or your service is working, your business model is working, before you start thinking the big dream that will impact hundreds of millions of lives around the planet, can you just nail down your offering with a limited audience? Can you go to a hundred families, a thousand families, I don't know what's a big enough number for your product. For a B2B product, maybe 10 clients. For a B2C, for a consumer tech product, maybe a thousand people, right? Who love your product or some aspect of your product? And, and that's probably very, very interesting. Right? So, so figure out what does it take to prove to yourself that the product is working because you got to validate back your gut. Your B plan, your product idea starts with a gut feel. But can you have a right goal? Okay, by this traction, not by an industry measure. Something that's very objective. So it doesn't need to be views. It doesn't need to be dollars. It can be something else also. But you got to decide that when do you reach enough fans uh, of your B2B, B2C, whatever product or offering, and then you go out to make more. Yeah? Does that make sense? Got it. Okay, having the right support group, uh, it sort of ties back. Uh, okay, so I, I punched two slides. But uh, well, having the right support group rally around you. So, so do you have enough people to support you even if they're not part of your team? Um, how does it work, right? And uh, how does the support group work for you? So, so I, I saw a lovely article, and I subscribed to that before. Is is what entrepreneurs can do? A very smart thing to do is do your best to get a good advisory pool around you. Um, that's not selling myself. That's just saying whatever is relevant for your industry, some particular functional gap. I'll I'll give you my own example. I'm doing biscuits as a product launch. I talked about. So there. Um, I'm not a technology guy, I'm not an engineer by background. So we've got a CTO uh, of a successful company helping me out, uh, doing the tech hiring, getting my tech thinking right, and so on. Uh, a consumer tech product targeting kids has to be designed really, really well. That's part of the key offering. I don't have design mindset at all. So you've got to be honest to yourself, right? And I was not able to figure it out, but in the process, I ran into somebody really, really cool. And then she's sort of helping me not only hire, but also clear up my design thinking. So, so that she's sort of my advisory person. Uh, then there's a question that you're rolling out something for children. Then what about the curriculum? What is the current pedagogy saying? Can somebody look at those aspects and advise us? Even if we don't agree, we want to junk it. But it's important to have somebody from that side. So we are right now putting that group together. Yeah, uh, before we have full timers, because as a startup, you can't afford full timers for everything, right? For the core functions, yes. Like I will not try to do an advice for somebody who will code me. I'll have some CTO person do the code review maybe, but not do the actual coding. They will not do work for you. They are there to advise you. So have the right support group around you. It's not that tough. A lot of people want to help, love to help. Um, uh, a Googler friend of mine, she was telling me uh, in March, when I was there, uh, that that one of the most important inherent needs of people is to go out and do things that they're passionate about. But she I was citing a research which said the second most important thing was uh, an intention to help out others. The how you get out of helping others selflessly is is amazing, right? Um, audio clicks in between. Okay, I'm sure a couple is taking care of that. But the question, going back to passion, is are you rolling out something that you want to buy and use? 
Uh, are you sold on that offering that it is adding meaningful value to you as a user if it's a consumer tech product or if you were to put yourself in the B2B shoes of the client, uh, how would you go about it? Okay, moving on, I think uh, this sort of a positioning articulation question, imagination being made very simple because people will try to understand you from a perspective of what they already know. And, and you may have your own lens, some fine tuning, some special way that you look at the same industry, same product space, and you talk about that. So can you simplify your message? Simple is much, much easier than complicated, trust me. It's much easier, simple is not simple and complicated, obviously that's true. It's much easier to do business with. So for example, we were trying to hire people for Wizkids, right, we are, we're still hiring. By the way, feel free to give me referrals for tech people and design people we are hiring quite aggressively, uh, we're based in Gurgaon. But I was hiring and I realized I was not doing a good job of telling people what Wizkids is about. So what we did was we put together a two minute video which actually tells people more than one hour of my talk was doing. And, and that was a much simpler way to communicate our offering, we put together one slide and that's it, that did the trick. So, and it could be something else, just the whole positioning articulation, what are you about? Can you really explain your business no matter what your business is, B2B, ultra cool, rocket science, but can you explain it to a five year old? Because guess what, you gotta pitch your business to everybody. Whether you're hiring people, you gotta explain your business, whether you're raising money, you gotta explain your business, whether you're pitching to clients, you gotta do it, whether you're outsourcing your development, you're outsourcing your marketing, everybody gotta first understand you. So, so the simpler your message is, you might be doing rocket science, but what is your first offering? This is early grind, can you simplify it? So, so let's really look at this slide parallel to the YouTube journey now. Um, so on YouTube, for example, when we started, there was no broadband in this country. This is your 2008 December, right? That's when I started at YouTube. We had just launched in India. There was really no broadband. And a lot of people, uh, I don't know what's the average age group for today, but a lot of people who were watching YouTube or who were aware of YouTube, they thought it carried very questionable content. It either had dogs and cats videos or they saw it having uh, objectionable, titillating sort of content, more adult kind of content and it was not really a professional content platform. Uh, the whole game I was trying to do was to get good content on it. And people said, I don't want to put up content on a platform that's clearly like a crazy content kind of platform, right? So could you simplify it? So, and, and, and you take the lowest hanging fruit first, right? You don't begin by fighting, no, 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 we can do it. I'll show it to you. Nobody's interested in what you can prove tomorrow. So, so we had to simplify our message, what could they do? So in this case, we said, hey, Yashraj Films, hey, Ross Entertainment, you need extra eyeballs for your movie promotions and trailers anyways, right? You don't care where it goes even today. Can you start by putting that together under one channel? Uh, so YouTube content providers have their own channel, just like Facebook pages, right? For those of you who don't know. And can you just start putting together your one minute, half minute trailers over there, right? And, and that was not super rocket science. They said, yeah, it's tribal always welcome, why not? And, and, and we just put that st starting point. Now the imagination made simple part over there was, right, we had the right goal, we had to get engaged with the industry. So we started there. The imagination made simple part was, you know what, there are huge NRIs outside. And most people do know this, right? Most professionals do know that there are lots of people outside who have interest in Bollywood, Indian TV content and so on. I said, how will you reach to them about a new launch. So you know what, YouTube is a global platform. Back then it had like hundreds of millions of users. So we've got hundreds of millions of users. Amongst them are people who are your fans. This is a platform that will allow you to connect. Does that make sense? And they were like, yes, 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 right? And to back it up, our product did have analytics from day one. So you could also show them live data as to which country's consuming their trailer, for example, right? And, and then from that was our starting point. So we started very, very low. We did not start. Today, we, when I left, there are about 15 to 20,000 full length authorized approved Indian movies on YouTube. But that's not where we started. We started by saying, okay, you have four movies in a year, you have 10 movies in a year, great, you have 10 trailers in a year. Can we just start with that, please? Okay, moving on. Um, from early crying, what's the traction path? Oh, uh, these are some images I picked up. Um, by the way, any feedback, any question on the previous slide, it was a long monologue. 
uh, like I said, please help me out by, by giving me some basic feedback um, on the chat box, question box, and I've lost my mouse somewhere. Okay, fraction pass, so I've picked up some images. There's a problem which is unknown, that's where you start. The solution which is unknown, that's where you start, right? And then basis data, feedback, insights, you keep fine tuning and iterating until the time you get it right. So you gotta start with what you want to validate in your learning, and the traction path is not 10,000 users, 1 million users. I see a lot of people bothering about that before they bother about have we nailed it? Have we figured out if I had a million dollars in marketing, then my product is ready for going for, for that sort of an ad spend. Uh, adjusted startup curve is not that smooth actually. So this is an emotional roller coaster. So you've got an idea, you start off with initial enthusiasm being very, very high. Then reality check happens during execution, you're not able to get traction. So your emotional curve is like down in the dumps. What we really prefer is this is how you should go. You know, good product idea, figure out a star team, have a breakthrough technology, prototype your product, these are the founding team, then you get a working product with the help of angels, micro scale results, promising results. It is rarely that smooth. So I just put it up out of sheer cynicism, right? Um, and by the way, a couple, I cannot move around the chat box, question box, just for you. So in case you see something, you have to come back. My mouse is giving me trouble. Sure. Uh, and it's just able to change slides to, to uh, arrows. Yeah, Amit, there was a question Good actually uh, some time back. Go on. Amrita, uh, she wants to know, hi, Amit, I'm very confused about idea to start with, how to choose an idea. So I think that was more with regards to the dis the previous discussion you were having. So whenever you find it right, you can respond to that. So Amrita, we did, our, uh, thanks for that question. We did answer that question very early on. Where What's your starting point? Starting point is an opportunity that you see to make an impact. So you see current solutions, nobody's making that impact and you get excited about that space. For me, it was with kids. For me, it was India goes global. Right? I got excited about these two ideas and doing two such Right? One is a hobby, India goes global, the hobby, digital media is not paying me for doing this talk. Right? Uh, I'm talking with excitement because I believe in what I'm trying to do and I'm excited about it. So, so the excitement question comes from you. You, you have, everybody has their own worldview, what they get excited about, uh, where they see gaps. The current offerings are not doing justice to this consumer need. Right? And, and then you go in with that idea and then you start breaking it down to very executable chunks. Uh, moving on, but that is a good question. Keep going. So the growth rate question, right? So what should be my growth rate? Now we've reached $2 million on YouTube at this stage. My first year is over. Uh, we signed up a lot of deals. We had Yashra, Jaros. First year we had UTV, Z, Television, Sony. Some of the very early ones who came on board and, and a dozen other people. Um, we sort of did a bunch of deals in the Telugu, Tollywood's uh, pool of content. And then all is happening. Um, and, and some of them are beginning to see like $1,000 a month. They're very excited about that sort of revenue back then. This is like your 2009 December. Uh, but the question is, where can you go? Right? So this is a Henry Ford quote, if I'm not mistaken. The man who thinks he can and he can't, both are right. The question is, which one are you? Right? So, so can you scale it? So, so you want to scale your early traction. It was 1,000 people. It was $2 million for YouTube. But it was 1,000 people for you. It was hundred dollars for you it was 200 rupees for you but now you got to scale it right so you got to believe first right that you can scale it do you still believe in your opportunity just go back to the question at this stage you got some proof of concept but where are you headed next nothing is really particularly very hard if you divide into very very small chunks so for me it was very simple people were not willing to give their full end movies in 2009 so I said, okay, fine, what are you willing to give? Can we break down the journey of your partnership into chunks? Can we start with short form trailers? Can we figure out more two minute, five minute clips around a movie? So edited scenes, deleted scenes, uh, highlight moments, whatever, right? Let's, let's add all of that in. Let's see what happens, right? Uh, and that started churning out a lot, lot of idols and, and revenue because YouTube was monetizing a lot of those uh, video views. So that started happening, but, but, but that was how we broke it down. And, and then eventually they built up enough comfort with us, our service, our platform, that they went out and started putting up full-length films. Uh, it started by the first film, 
the first firm promo we did was uh, we actually started with a very big bang. Uh, we did a lot of firms that came which were not giving any PR mileage to us. So, so Rashtri Firms was a partner who was very early on, very dynamic, and, and they put up like a few full length firms. And they started getting some decent revenues and traction and I'm like, okay, that's exciting. Then in February of, or, or was it March of 2010, we go ahead and launch uh, Striker. It is a low budget uh, film with, with a quality theme. The movie did not do well, unfortunately. Uh, but the whole premise was a movie with that budget and that star cast will typically anyway not get many screens abroad, right? So in India, they would probably be limited to metros and some select cities. Uh, and then abroad, they had no chance. So we said, why don't digital be the delivery medium? And that experiment, that business model that came out of a sheer need that I got excited about, we found out of uh, a studio. This was part of Studio 18, a group, which got very excited about this whole philosophy and said, let's, let's do it as an experiment. What is there to lose? Because you'll anyway not make revenue outside. And, and the model was really appreciated. We got Wall Street Journal Press writing about it. And, and, and since then, people started thinking about YouTube as possible delivery platform for full-length movies and not just dogs and cat videos and not just adult content, right? And, and then, and, and that sort of started a spiral. I think we ended that year with more than a thousand full length titles in 2010, right? And, and nothing's really, really hard. So, so if I had to build up a lot of content in India, we put together a wish list. What are the top content providers that we know, right? Let's that list be the starting point. Let's, let's put down a hundred people. Let's start approaching them through contacts, referrals, whatever and keep going with that, right? So just break it down. And, and in the growth rate question, you want to grow 10 times on a small base, you want to grow 100 times, 1,000 times, you're right. You just got to believe what's possible, right? And accordingly, uh, plan the right tactics, the path that will take you to that goal. So what are the go-to-market principles? See, you're a startup. I'm a startup, you're a startup. At YouTube at that time, you were a startup. Google was not the brand. Uh, I mean, you and I are talking about internet today. Internet penetration is gone crazy in India, right? It's 300 million people. But back then, we're talking about like 2009, 2008, 2009, 2010. Uh, people don't really respect you as a platform. People don't believe in you. There's no problem in this country. The content, other content that's there is very objectionable. I don't want to see my quality content out there, right? So, so you got to start by first getting engaged. In sales parlance, we call it get your foot in the door. And I think what your strength could be is just sheer honesty. So I used to simply say, I know there is no broadband in this country. And that's my strength because you know what? There is no revenue to lose. You will not get eyeballs in India, so it doesn't hurt your other traditional revenue lines like for a movie guy. It will not hurt your cinema traffic. It will not hurt your TV, TRPs. So why don't you put it up anyways, right? And, and then try it out. So, so we used to always admit what is our flop, not try to fight it, what's there to lose. So bring it small. And, and that sort of honesty, we would never give them a million dollar forecast. I would always go on and say, the first struggle is, let's start the ball rolling with whatever content you're comfortable with. Let's get some early eyeballs. Let's get some early revenue, like $1,000 a month. To ZTV CEO, I'm telling, get $1,000 a month. It's probably laughing. But then I would also put into perspective, how much money are you making through other online streams? Internet is small today. Let's not lie about it. So honesty is a very, very big strength. If you don't try to fib around it, you just play to your strengths, but also be very honest about your weaknesses. I agree there's no penetration for YouTube in India. It's not a big platform, but what else is big for you? If you don't have a vision for uh, long term for online video, don't participate. But if you think it'll be big, let's go for it. And that brought me a lot of trust and mileage, uh, which really helped. Okay, this is one point I, I went on crazily about the Thai talk, but, but here is the point we make, I'm trying to make here. So there are a lot of people who are saying that I'm doing my best, right? Uh, I, I'm doing my best about this, I'm doing my best about that. But your attitude around this has got to be slightly different. Are you giving it all you have versus the best you can do? There's a subtle difference in the way I'm about to say this. So are you giving it all you have? So in my case, for example, while I was talking to Z, Sony were like really, really highbrow people, right? Uh, we were talking to three idiots with, with, with the Chopra team and so on. But we were also very happy. I don't know how many of you are like really tracking the online video deals, but 
one of our uh, partners at YouTube, Joboho, just sold for uh, a very high sum, right? It's it's not disclosed outside, but they got sold for a very high sum, uh, which which runs into like double digit millions of dollars, and um, uh, and 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 they were after three years on YouTube, at some time they were doing like two thousand dollars a month for a team size of twenty. They were clearly making losses, but their attitude was, we believe in online video. And, and we were saying, okay, as long as you believe in it, we'll support you. So we never pulled the plug on a small guy, big guy. Somebody walked in to me with saying, I put a five nursery rhymes through a partner channel. I want to have a channel of my own. And I said, you know what? It's an overhead to set up the whole team, do the learning process. Why don't you stick to this guy, deal with him, get better terms with him if you're not happy, right? But he said, no, I've seen enough. For me to know there's an opportunity in this, let me go with it. And it was his vision that I was writing. So I did not say no to a person which is not a known company. Uh, if I call out the names, you will say, who are these people, right? I've never heard of these people. These only I've heard of, these are like unheard of names. And I was just going and writing with whoever believed. I was giving it all I had, right? <clears throat> so I spoke about this already. Target wish list should be in place, the low hanging fruit. Um, I talk about this a lot, execution. I see a lot of people thinking too hard about what's the right path. But even if where their hunch is saying there is some action happening, they don't execute enough. So I think I've seen I've seen now 400 entrepreneur teams quite closely in a in a discussion of strategy setting. But you got to execute really really fast, right? While I'm talking, I'm sure out of like 71 people showing here, there's at least one or two people who are translating some of this, maybe one thing, to an actionable today, right? Maybe just one thing that has clicked so far, maybe just to one person. But that's the sort of speed you need to execute and get quick feedback into a learning curve because you're validating, validating, validating stuff. A bonus point is celebration principles. I'm sort of running short on time. I'm going to elaborate a lot, but you got to celebrate every small thing. Striker movie I talked about, which got Wall Street Journal press, but before it got the press, it had to, there was a lot of grind to deliver on that product. I'm saving that story for a much longer session sometime. Uh, we can always get together and, and, and gossip about it. But it was very tough. YouTube did not have the, all the technology pieces together. So operationally it was tough. But we were celebrating every small win. We were just celebrating, celebrating every small thing which was meaningful in the right direction. You got to build that culture, that vibe inside your team. You might be two people team, three people team. You might be alone. But you got to build that inside of you. You got to celebrate yourself just to manage your emotional roller coaster that you'll be going through. So you've got to do with that. The funnel principle is very quickly in one minute is, is this is a funnel. I don't know whether you can see me. Oh, you can't. So if, if visualize a funnel, right? I switched off my camera, sorry. So, so visualize a funnel and, and you've got to put, a, so if the funnel is broad on top and then there's an output at the bottom. So, so business is like that. Getting traction is like that. You've got to put in your lot of input at the top to get very small output at the bottom. So I, I typically follow a rule of 100. Uh, if somebody is seriously trying to do a B2B business, for example, right? I would say if you've not hit upon 100 meetings in less than a month, you're not really putting enough into the funnel so that something comes out. Uh, if you're trying to do a, a, a tech hiring, I'm, I'm trying to hire my CTO co-founder, the ad is out, right? So if I've not met and reviewed like 100 people in a month, I think I'm not doing enough. Right? I will not hit up on the right person. So, so you got to put enough. And, and if, if you get results early, great, stop. You don't have to keep doing it, right? If you get results on the 20th person, 50th person, great. Uh, but, but if you don't, don't come back frustrated to yourself, to your mirror, to your team, to your boardroom, to your family without putting in a rule of 100. Uh, I, I love that rule of 100. I don't know where I read it. Scaling up, I think we're going to just take a break here from the deck. Um, I think scaling up was the journey from a lot more about 20 to 100, but also about 2 to 20. I'm going to save that in the interest of time. Um, and, and I would like to flip to make questions. It's not relevant for most of the crowd. You know, that's why I'm going to do it. So if you have massive objections, please drop me a mail. Um, I'll try to cover it at some other talk, invite you to my round table or something. Um, but but I'll, I'll let you see through the slides very quickly, 30 seconds each. Changing slides. One, two, three. 
yeah, so so going back to the learning curve, uh, Eric Ries has, has got a popular book. In the startup, both the problem and solutions are unknown. You do believe you are the problem right, the solution right, but you still got to validate. Ah, this is a slide I'll spend not much on, but primarily just read through it in my way. Uh, it's an important slide. So four things that I, I just stick to, you will hear from me somewhere or the other. Leveraging. You alone are never enough if you're trying to make a big impact. So this boils down to networking. Are you spending enough time with enough quality people trying to learn? Are you going to have webinars like these from Digital Vidya um, or, or some other Thai forums or someplace else trying to learn, learn, learn? It also points back to reading. So since I decided to jump out, I must have read or listen to, I, I do a lot of audio books, um, nothing less than 25 to 30 books on entrepreneurship, various areas that I thought I know nothing about and I needed to know right now. Um, and this is like over eight months, they were take like one book, 10 days, sort of an average, right? Um, and, and it's primarily just being greedy and hungry to know enough to be able to do enough. I did not stop my doing or action. I don't read books all day. I read it like 15 to 30 minutes a day with a lot of discipline or I listen to it while driving or something uh, or while inside a flight uh, for half an hour, one hour, two hours of audio books. That's my method. But but I, that's that's primarily leveraging. You're saying, I don't know enough, right? I don't know everything. I'm not the Einstein on the planet. So how do I leverage the knowledge pool that's already out there? Second thing is emotional versus logical. A lot of people explain themselves very logically but getting into entrepreneurship, that's half of you. It's purely an emotional choice. You will know when the moment is right. You will know when the idea is right because some ideas will come and consume you. Third thing we talked about on the funnel principle is take massive, massive action. Um, I don't think I was super bright, but I did a lot of meetings, a lot of calls. I think I, I learned the hard way. Uh, there were some very slow deals which took four years to do. There were some easy deals which got done in like one call, one meeting, but they were all kinds. But I was doing massive action. I did not hold back at all. I was giving it all I got. The third, the, the last one is, uh, this comes from LinkedIn founders, uh, philosophy of being there, and that's, that's whom I heard it from. I don't know whose philosophy this is. From perpetual beta. So are you in a stage of perpetual beta as a person, as a startup? Are you really listening to everybody? Are you really learning all the time? Versus saying we know everything. Um, even Steve Jobs, who sort of provided the philosophy of about I know everything, he was always listening and learning from others, uh, from the right talent pool. Um, that's, that's at least what the material about him says. So I, I, I believe in that, that's why I'm sharing this. But before I wrap up, and we've got 10 minutes for questions now, um, your next step could be just this. Book a free one is to one strategy, brainstorm session from India Goes Global. What I would need as a process is email the pitch deck and just two key decision points. It may be an email discussion, a Skype discussion, or an in-person. Uh, but but we try to get back to everybody who's got a pitch deck and a product ready. Um, if you are one of your entrepreneurs, you're picking your ideas, I'm not the right person, we are not the right people. Uh, we're sort of good once you've got a product baked at some level. It might be a broken product, just doing a pilot, not getting traction, that's always fine. Uh, but if you're like figuring out your idea like Amrita or, or somebody who's just thinking about it, they've figured out an idea but they're still nailing it down as an idea stage, it will not help you that much because we are about traction and scaling, and that happens only when your offering is sort of ready. Uh, does that make sense? Um, and this is the email ID you guys could use. You can also ping me on LinkedIn primarily, sometimes Twitter, uh, but, but both are fine. I do access uh, all three news. The most efficient would be India Goes Global at Gmail. Expect a, a week's latency sometimes after a talk like this, but that's about it. You, you'll at least get an acknowledgement and a sense of timeline. Uh, but, but your next step could also be just thanking Digital Vidya for just enabling this handshake. Uh, and I'm very grateful for those. Sorry, my next point is about to begin. Um, but thank you so much uh, for listening to me, being kind and patient with your time. And now we'll just take questions and I will try my mouse again. I can't cover, so you will have to moderate the questions. That's okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, thanks for a wonderful, wonderful, insightful session. Definitely uh, valuable for all of us, including me. Uh, so there are some very interesting questions which have popped up, so I'll just try to take as many of these as possible. There's a question from Pragnesh. He's saying that, is it right um, to go for angel funding if you have good amount of your own capital? Please give us idea about when and 
at what scale to raise fund? Okay, there is no answer to this without a context. So what I can share is there are general principles. Why do you need an injured funding? The question is why. If you have enough money, bootstrap it. You really don't want to be accountable to others in the decision making. If you don't need their money, don't take it. Maybe you need their talent pool. So what your answer is not angel funding. Your answer is really advisory board, right? So 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 I, I'm not sure whether I got your real context, but but happy to be, feel free to email me with the detail, pitch deck about you, what business you're about, um, and then your B plan, and then maybe I can answer you an email later, which is I just brought up the slide back. Next question. Uh, great. So next question is from Saurabh. He's saying, Hi Amit, uh, I have an idea. How okay. should uh, I start? I mean, how should I make my business plan and what all things should I consider in the business plan? Okay. I got this back, so I'm trying to look at it. Yeah. Uh, could you repeat that one from Saurabh, please? Yeah. This, the question is that I have an idea. How should Mm -hmm. How do I start? I mean, how should I make my business plan and what all things should be considered in the business plan? So there are a lot of pitch deck uh, templates out there on the web. Uh, you go to a lot of VC sites like Y Combinator and so on. They have templates. Just go to SlideShare, you find a template. Um, Alok uh, Rodenhoods has a community. They have a template which they prescribe. Just take any template. Whichever you like, just don't, don't spend too much time on what all you need to cover. Just browse through four or five templates in 30 minutes, whenever you can spend that 30 minutes quality focus time, and just choose one and fill it up completely. Don't play around too much with that template. I mean, there are sections which are not relevant to you, of course, ignore those, but for your startup, whatever is relevant and important to anybody who's looking at you and trying to evaluate you as an investor, just go fill it up. Uh, does that answer the complete question or the second question as well? Uh, Saurabh, is there a question that could be a follow-up question? Please type it down as well. Uh, by the way, there is the next. take another question. Sure. The Mary has a question: How to make an impression in the market with big, with many big players? Um, so again, uh, out of context, this may not make sense. But in general, when you start up, the principle is go to a very, very narrow niche. Don't go broad. You don't have the resources or the team or the money to execute a broad strategy. So, for example, if I was trying to challenge Google at search, right? Big, massive player dominating the best experience of today. I will not follow the Bing strategy of saying, you know what, we're building a better search. Okay. I uh, would probably follow the startup and Bing could afford to do that because they had the deep pockets and still didn't do well, honestly. But what, what I would say is just choose a small vertical in a small country with a small focus group and improve the experience to them, get feedback from them, get validation from them that it works, right? And, and in case you're a service offering or a revenue dependent offering, then they're willing to pay, right? And then you go out to scale. But, but there's no big market that startups attack. Maybe I hope that makes sense. Can we move to the next one? Sure. The next question is from Rajesh Badgiri. Um, interesting question. He's saying that in the context of from traction to scaling, would like to understand the triggers to indicate to move from organic to inorganic growth traction for B2C businesses. Uh, that's a very good question. Now, there are a lot of schools of thought, uh, Rajesh, on this one. Um, I think what I prescribe to is do most organic stuff first. Get it validated. So, so for example, social media. Right? So a lot of people use social media or search sort of marketing. Let's say that's the inorganic move, okay? Or we did on a partnership distribution side could be a, and try to get an initial basic traction, right? Uh, at that level. Now, if your question really is from traction to scaling, so you don't want a two to two million dollars sort of a journey or a twenty to hundred million dollar journey, 
then there is no generic answer. Then I think the only advice I can give you is once I see your P plan, the specifics, because nothing else would make sense to you. Each business is so unique, even if they're in the same vertical, same offering, they're so unique in their own ways that nothing specific uh, can be discussed here without knowing the details. So you're probably an ideal person to write in. Uh, great. Uh, guys, I'm actually uh, skipping some of the questions which I'm assuming are already getting uh, answered. I can see so. the questions. So I'll, I'll start rolling very quickly because it's sort of short of time. Sure. Okay, though, how does YouTube make its money? Just content offering that has come up recently, but primarily it's ad revenue. Yeah. Um, hi, Amit from Girish. When you start working on startup and business models, unique, but funding is an issue. Should it be the time to go for funding? The model is unique. I think your first... Uh, so, so typically where people start is they do a friends and family round for very basic funding. They get co-founders to work for equity, right, when you have no money, right, uh, or, or very little money, and, and you just start with that. And then build some form of a prototype which people can see at least at a demo version or something, and then you take that to angel investors to do it. So somebody told me you work on three things all the time. I'm trying to practice it. One is your monetary plan, your finances. You, you're trying to raise money, so you've got to do it. You've got to reach out, talk to people, get feedback, uh, close loop with them, do a follow-up. Uh, you've got to always be look out for hiring good people, co-founders, employees, depending on the stage of your startup. right? You've got to constantly be hiring. Uh, the third thing is obviously evolving your product and service experience. right? Uh, these three things, they don't stop in early days ever. They don't get delegated at all. The founder or the co-founding team, they take the whole burden, right? So, so those are three things that will always go parallel. So don't think that today I will work on one. Every day, it's all three. If there is some special occasion, then at least at a weekly basis, there was enough time for these three. Because trust me, there'll be lots of other things that will take your time away. There'll be distractions. Uh, quickly, uh, Rahul, legal hazards. Get a good lawyer. Get a good, good lawyer. Don't be sasta about this. Uh, if your startup is plagued by legal hazards because of the kind of industry you're in, also get a legal. It will take you a long time before you can afford a dedicated legal team unless you're seriously funded. But this happens. So between advisory board and getting, there are very, very high quality lawyer teams that have come up. And, and honestly, uh, they, they're trying to do a lot in the startup space. Uh, you go to Thai, you go to Digital Vidya, seminar list, I'm sure they've done a legal person. If not, a couple that's for you as an idea to have sure. a legal person do this. I think it's a very, very important question. Great. I we spent three months hunting for the right lawyer CA team for my startup. It's stupid, but, but I just wasn't enough. I think it's a very serious thing. I take it really, really seriously. So I spent three months getting that comfort uh, from the team. Uh, go to market. GTM is go to market strategy bush and you should Google it. Uh, it's, a, it's an industry jargon. Sorry for using jargons. Um, Arpana. Sometimes in the journey of entrepreneurship, we can try to say this. trouble clicking off an app. Ah. Motivation. <laughs> so each of us have our detox. I can only share my recipe. Um, I think the fact that you're working on something that really, really is passionate um, and, and you go for it. Other thing that inspired me are autobiographies. There is no successful person who's not gone through struggles. So including Steve Jobs who got fired from his own board uh, and so on and so on. So I like to listen to stories of these people who are successful in any walks of life. I have read almost 50 plus autobiographies in the last 18 months. Um, I, I admit it's a very, very important part of the emotional roller coaster, keeping your emotional levers in control. That was a point on my slide also. The third thing that works for me sometimes is praying. I, I believe in God, I'm spiritual. Sometimes you get so frustrated, you're like, God, please help me. And you're going like, please, please, please. And with God, you can just bear your soul, right? If you're not religious, I'm sorry, but this is my recipe, what works for me. Uh, this is not for anybody else's, but, but I'm just sharing what works for me. 
Um, the fourth thing that has worked for me sometimes, not always, is music. So, so something to distract you, do something on the side, a sport, music, some kind of a hobby, uh, which can take your mind away. Typically, rigorous sport or like gymming or running or something that that's something I've seen people use. Um, so, so those could be your detox. Thanks, Sanket. Since you're a global platform behind you, the stars, you're the same if you start a platform, not much less. I agree, Sanket. Um, and then follow up, would like to get know more about scaling up. Ping me, uh, you have my email ID, you have my LinkedIn, ping me later with details, happy to help. That's what India Goes Global is all about. Uh, but, but you got to play your strengths, Sanket. Uh, global was my strength at YouTube, I used it. But this kid's global is not my strength. You have got to figure out your strength. Uh, I think sometimes that's an important investment of your time to figure out what will work for you. Somna, three month old startup, excellent team. Ha. Ah. Okay, uh, we share a burn, Somna. It's really, really tough. As an ex Googler, it's no different. I don't know your background. You might be like the most top notch company, you might be student, failed student, college dropout, doesn't matter. Getting the right people is a chase. I was attending a webinar just around that yeah, last night. And I was so frustrated, not able to get people that I want. Uh, it's really hard to attract talent. We were doing a session, portfolio meetup with 91 Springboard, which is a community of startups. And this came out as one of the big three items. Uh, the other two were how to share equity with the co-founding team and the first employees, and how to raise money, right, was the right ways. But hiring came out as a big pain area across. I think we all have to go through it. Uh, it, it helps to get the first one on board if you don't have one who's willing to work for equity primarily and not primarily for cash. Um, uh, like building, I'm not a guru uh, on building things from scratch. I, 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 I can't say that. You don't have a talent in my network. My suggestion is read books around this. My suggestion is get, get to forum and ask these questions just like you asked here. Uh, my, my suggestion is read up. My suggestion is massive action. Have you spoken to, for a skill set that you're looking for, 100 people last month? If that was not enough last week. So maybe next week you should do that. Thanks. Uh, Amit, uh, just a quick suggestion. It, it would be good if you can just. So just uh, increase the quantity when things are not working. Sometimes when you go back and analyze. Yeah, I, I'm saying just a quick suggestion. Yes, uh, uh, just read the question before you respond because uh, people are not able to see all the questions. So that would be helpful. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, We're about to wrap up. We're like four minutes over. So sure. I'll, I'll do that for the next one. Legal helpers. Okay. Uh, this is a question from Mikhail. Should one have a working prototype or have validated with some users to try and connect on this ID? Um, I don't understand the question, I'm afraid. Couple, if you can interpret this for me, otherwise we'll have to come back and do it separately on email. Sure, I'm just spotting the question, so you can move on. This is from Mikhail. Okay, I'm moving to Kushal. There's a lot of competition. There are big brands working on all kinds of business. How to deal with such competition by startup? Great question, Kushal. Uh, competition is part of life. Uh, and like I said, if you're at a very early stage, you've got to figure out some pain area which is not being solved properly. There are opportunities everywhere. If you're entrepreneurial, you'll find them. Uh, associate with a lot of entrepreneurs. Read books about entrepreneurial journeys. I read a very daunting, thick, thick Steve Jobs book, but it taught me a lot. But I read a lot of small, tiny books which teach me a lot. I think you will you'll begin to see things differently. Go to a lot of entrepreneurship conferences, not like webinars, but actually invest time in going and meeting people at conferences. Uh, that's my mantra. I, I talk about the power of association and networking a lot. So that's your answer for this one. I'm going to do a speed bit right now, guys, uh, just in the interest of time. Um, and, and and if I flounder, just I apologize in advance. You have my email ID to reach back to me. Ketan uh, Shetty says, hey, Amit, I'm working on an idea, taking it to the next step like discovery. Prototype wireframe, I like to discuss with a lot of experts around. I think, uh, Ketan, for you, pitching at a incubator sort of a place is a great place to get feedback. Uh, that's what you, I would go after if I were you. Um, I don't know which city you are in, but the incubator is in most top cities all the time. Or you can travel or you can pitch work. Yeah. Girish, 
Hi, I'm Nick. When you're working on startup and the business model is unique. Okay, we've discussed this one again. So this is a repeat. Ketan Shetty, but the fear of idea being hijacked or so would suggest don't bother about it. My honest two cents to you, Ketan, is don't bother about idea hijacking. The value is not an idea alone. In fact, last night's webinar said what I believe in. So, so the speaker was saying that she said the idea is I will not give anybody any equity just for the idea. If they are not participating in the execution, bringing an idea to life is where the problem is. Look at the questions we are saying, right? I don't have money, I don't have people. Solving those are bigger problems, right? And, and that's where you make your money, that's where you create value, that's where you make the impact. Ideas are a lot, you will get a lot of good ideas in the day, you can't execute on everything. But figure out one domain, proving it right, that's where the value is. Um, there are very rare exceptions, the idea could be hijacked, but if you can get patent protection, etc., that's your path. But in general, for patent also you'll have to do some action. So execution is where a lot of value does get created. Mary, we are into Android app development. Okay, I think it makes sense. Bhushan Kumar. Amit, is it a good strategy to give equity stake for an expensive service like technology? Bhushan, the question is not clear, but if you were talking about outsourcing as an option uh, for equity, that depends on your pocket, that depends on your objective, that depends on who are you outsourcing to. Uh, equity, cash are both your options depending on what's possible for you and what the other party is available for but people do do it. Uh, there are people on both sides who are willing to do it. Rahul Gatta, how to control business idea stealing? I think we covered it earlier, don't bother about it. Just execute fast, take massive action. Execute, execute, execute. Pragnesh, if we have regulatory problems with our idea, how could we solve it out? I mean, no proper laws from them. Okay. Pragnesh, that's a very tricky one. Um, all I see right now as an ecosystem is a lot of hope. Um, in this place, your advisory pool would be very important. Um, you may want to have somebody who does government relations for a living, a legal team, etc. Whoever is the body controlling you. So I was talking to these people who just raised a big angel round, fair sent people who just announced 250k round uh, this week, um, and and they were facing serious challenges because RBI does not recognize their industry. And this was like eight months ago. It did slow them down. It's a reality. Uh, but but that's what you get to solve. That's what you get paid to solve. Um, so so you got to invest energies into it. If you have that hurdle, please invest. You advisory board is a mantra. Get a good legal team on your side is a mantra. Somesh, uh, we have been working on an idea that's a relatively new market. However, there's a big player involved, but with a different focus at this time. While at this stage we're not in direct competition with them, we are worried that any day they could release a new product or app feature that matches the product, putting us in direct competition. We don't have access to large funding, hence we are expected to also advise to go forward. Please launch. Please launch in a very niche market. Don't make too much of noise about it. Uh, if Google never launched its services, they, Yahoo would be the search provider. Ask Jeeves would be the search provider. You probably don't think them as search for players, but back in the day, they were providing search. Just understand before Amazon, there was e-commerce. So just please launch. You don't know whether you're the next Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. Please launch. Believe in yourself. Go for it. All these doubts, have a learning curve post-launch. What about just spinning the whole fear around? If the big company really likes your idea, why wouldn't they try to buy you out? They're getting people. It's not a bad exit option, right? Uh, just change your thinking around it. It's, it's getting people who are talented, excited about the idea, have proven some pilot. They would want to acquire you. It's not a bad place to be in. Even if you don't want to sell like Snapchat, it's not a bad place to be. Amrita asks, do we need to quit job to start an entrepreneurship? Ah, there is no one answer. I think the answer will come from inside of you. It will not come from me. Just listen to your inner voice. Uh, if you feel motivated enough to jump, please jump. If you don't, please don't. Uh, your support system is ambiguous on this. There will be people who will be conservative. There will be people who will be aggressive. They'll be more conservative, less aggressive. So you got to be clear about it and answer to your inner voice. Do your financial planning, do your due diligence. As long as you're sure it's the right time, just go for it. I believe in entrepreneurship. Anurag Singh, how to set price for skills? Like if someone is advisor, teacher, consultant, how to set the rate for it and from where should we start? 
Um, I learned a lot of things from this book by Guy Kawasaki called The Art of Start 2.0. There is the original version which I really like. Then I found the 2.0 which is really boring but very, very useful in the tips. I think you'll find some answers there in the interest of time. Devashish, what are the parameters with which the angel brokers check before investing in your idea? Please pitch. You'll find that. Google it a little bit. Go to Rowden, it's kind of community, by combinator kind of communities. You'll find it there. But primarily they're looking for team, uh, basic validation of idea, either as a consumer or something that you've demonstrated. Ketav, how did YouTube make money at the grassroots level? How did the company sustain in the first couple of years? Uh, oh, they were bleeding. They're still bleeding. YouTube is still not a profit making company. So sometimes, like Facebook wasn't in the early years, YouTube isn't. Um, and and, and you've got to survive basis some, some investment funding, whether it's your own or uh, VC ecosystem. Bhushan, what, is, what are the startup networks once you get involved? What I know is Thai. Thai is a great start. Please start. Um, there are other communities that are coming up all the time. You will find people at Thai while you go to attend the sessions. I think that's where you will start. Um, I am I, very well networked with 91 Springboard Fraternity over here in Gurgaon. They're opening up a shop in Bombay. They're there in Hyderabad. I'm getting connected to a team in Singapore. I'm getting connected to a team in Bangalore. But, but there are a lot of these small, small communities. This is the time to do startups in terms of the ecosystem. So you can go for it. Uh, but Thai is a great starting point. Just go meet more people over there. Um, Girish, how to start for VCs? Uh, if you're reading the newspapers, just figure out a way to do connections. Um, there's this book by LinkedIn to founder chairman called The Startup of You. It talks a lot about how to network professionally. You'll get some good tips over there. Rahul, how to control business idea is stealing. We covered that before. Um, Shailen, I'm a US citizen residing in India for five years, planning for a startup. Need an advice regarding setting up a private limited company. I'm not a lawyer. Please contact a lawyer, Shailen. There you will have your answers. Um, you probably got that right. Ethan Pune. Saurabh, can you suggest some good books or articles about startup stories? Okay, I think I've been just rattling them off right now. Ketav, uh, sorry to be less clear. How did you, okay, we've covered this. Hassan Ali, a B2C service. Okay, we'll pause for more questions now. We have 15 minutes over, please, guys. So these are the last three on my board. Please don't type in more now. We'll take everything else offline. Hassan Ali, a B2C service related business requires a good product in terms of a website. Should it be started with everything in place or gradually build it? Gradually build it. That's the answer. So gradually build it. Take feedback. Assume you don't know everything. Build it the best version, but that's never a final version. Uh, but have something out there. Have it a professional, good looking. If need be, invest in the money or the people or the time to do it. But please do it. Which is the best book? There's no one best book, Sapnil. Um, it's a lot of books. We don't know what you what will appeal to you personally. So, so you got to go through your set of books. Uh, books is just leveraging knowledge that's already been documented by other people's experiences. So that's what how it should go. Ketav, how to come that Facebook end up raising more money if they're bleeding? Good question. I think investors see beyond uh, profits. They see other matters like, okay, are they building huge, huge engagement? So Facebook, that's what worked for them. There were people who were coming in every day uh, and lots and lots of people, and there were people who were spending lots and lots of time. It is only a matter of time with a demand curve like that and a stickiness like that that you would figure out your revenue model. And Facebook is making tons of money now, so those investors have been through with that. And that's the investors take up part. So if you have demand, that's not a small thing. Traction is also about demand, which is why I included YouTube Consumer numbers when I started. That's it. Wow. Great. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for this rapid fire QA. I loved it. Thank you so much. Great. And uh, thanks a lot, Amit, for uh, taking on all the questions. I don't think there is any question that is left unanswered. And, guys, in any case, we'll be sending you the recording of this session also. And uh, uh, we'll also do other blog posts. So in case you have any further question, you can just put it as a comment over there. Or in any case, you can directly co contact Amit. He's already given his call.
coordinates if you have any follow up question on that uh, just a quick um, uh, i would say commercial question also from our side you know we do 6 months course on online marketing and in any case if any one of you is interested in taking it up and uh, then you can just mention yes over here and i'll forward your contact details to our internal team and they will contact you further so uh, with that um, uh, i mean thanks to all of you for participating and thanks amit um, we've already exceeded by 16 minutes so thanks for your time thank you everybody you are the best audience take care have a good day thank you everybody the session is closed thanks a lot